Hi, Ms. Hall here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about ancient Egypt. I'm going to give you an introduction to the geography and the history of this early civilization. The Nile River is by far the most important geographical feature in ancient Egypt. In fact, Egypt is often called the gift of the Nile, because if it weren't for the river, the civilization would not have existed. Now, the Nile has two unique features. The first is that it flows from the south to the north, where it empties into the Mediterranean. The second is that it regularly flooded, and that regular flooding is what made the development of the Egyptian civilization possible. It would deposit rich, fertile soil full of silt that was great for farming. If you look at these two pictures, you'll notice that not very far, in fact, as close as 10 miles to the Nile, all around is desert. But because of that flooding, the fertile land around the Nile was great for early farmers and great for the development of a civilization. Egypt is divided into two distinct regions, Upper Egypt in the south and Lower Egypt in the north. Lower Egypt includes the delta area where the Nile empties into the Mediterranean. Now this might seem backward, but remember, the Nile River flows north, so Upper Egypt is upriver from Lower Egypt. About 3100 BC, King Menses united the two regions and made Egypt the world's first unified state. The river served as a highway and a trade route to Africa, the Middle East, and the Mediterranean. The history of Egypt is divided into three time periods. The Old Kingdom from 2700 BC to 2200 BC, the Middle Kingdom from 2050 BC to 1800 BC, and the New Kingdom from 1550 BC to 1100 BC. During these different kingdoms, the land passed from one dynasty or ruling family to another, but it mostly remained unified. This map shows the lands of Egypt during the Old Kingdom. The Old Kingdom was a time when pharaohs organized a strong centralized state. These pharaohs, or Egyptian rulers, were more than what we think of as rulers today. They were actually believed to be God, and they had absolute power. They owned and they ruled all of the kingdom. They took great pride, though, in preserving justice and order in their kingdoms. During the Old Kingdom, the Egyptians built the Great Pyramids at Giza that are the best known symbol of ancient Egypt. The pyramids were tombs for the rulers, the pharaohs, in which they preserved their bodies and everything else they would need to live their new life in the afterlife. Construction of the pyramids required enormous funding, planning, and organization. And they're a true testament to the strength of this Egyptian civilization. If you look at the diagram here, you'll see just how detailed these pyramids were. But building the pyramids was costly, and this cost, along with power struggles and crop failures, led to the collapse of the Old Kingdom. After over a century of disunity, new pharaohs reunited the land, which led to the beginning of the Middle Kingdom. The Middle Kingdom was a very turbulent period. The Nile did not rise as regularly as it had before, and corruption and rebellion were very common. But it wasn't all bad. A large drainage project helped create new stretches of farmland. Egypt also occupied a new part of Nubia in the south, a gold-rich land, and they increased their trade with the Middle East and the Mediterranean. You can see on this map the Kingdom of Egypt during the Middle Period. Around 1700 BC, foreign invaders, the Hyksos, arrived and occupied the Delta region of Egypt. The Egyptians were awed by their horse-drawn war chariots, but the Hyksos were also impressed by the Egyptian civilization and soon adopted many of their cultures. After more than a hundred years, new leaders arose and drove out the Hyksos and set up the New Kingdom. During the New Kingdom, powerful and ambitious pharaohs created a large empire, as you can see on this map. This age of conquest brought Egypt into greater contact with Southwest Asia and other parts of Africa. It led to increased trade, but also increased conflict. Two important rulers of the New Kingdom were Hatshepsut and Ramses II. Hatshepsut was one of the first female rulers of known history. She ruled from 1503 BC to 1482 BC and encouraged trade along the Red Sea and Africa. Ramses II ruled from 1290 BC to 1224 BC and pushed Egyptian rule northward as far as Syria and southward further into Nubia. After Ramses II, Egyptian power slowly declined. In your next lesson, you'll learn more about the civilizations that developed alongside of and following this Egyptian civilization.